In this three-part series, I want to talk about why I chose the P1S for Bamboo as my next printer. So I want to discuss why I chose it over the competitors, give an initial reaction, and then ultimately do a complete review. But for today, let's talk about why did I choose the P1S over all of the other options. So right now I have a Soval SV04 and a Creality Ender 3. I love my printers. And in fact, Soval has spoiled me to where I can't imagine printing in non-multicolor. So that's something I absolutely have to have in a printer now. But the SV04, I think it may be age. I mean, the automatic bed leveling has never been great, to be honest. But now, especially with larger prints, it's just not good. And so that is a reason I want to find a new printer. Also, the print quality has continued to degrade over time, even with the work I've put in to bring it back up to speed. And so those are reasons I need a new printer. I want automatic bed leveling. I have to have multicolor printing. And then there are some things I would like to have, but they're not mandatory. So for example, having an integrated camera system would be really cool for time lapses. Having a filtration system within the 3D printer, that way I'm not breathing in those VOCs and I don't have to worry about that down the road, would be huge. I don't have to have them, but I would like those. And so now I know what I want. Let's look at what printers are on the market. And even if you're similar to me, what are the options, the competitors? And let's dive into why the P1S was my choice. Alrighty, so let's talk about the Bamboo P1S right off the bat. So this allows you to print in multiple colors with the AMS attachment. So there's four additional colors there. Now note, it's not per printer head. So you only have one nozzle. And what that means is you're going to have your filament poop. You're going to have prime towers. So there's a little more waste than if you have individual printer heads. However, still pretty nice. The printer quality and the print quality in general, very high. It's a solid machine, and the good thing I liked about the P1S is it's been out for a little while, so I've been able to look at all of the reviews, and I can see through its lifespan, has it always been consistent? Is it stable? What are the main causes of concern? Do people have issues years after they originally get it? And thankfully for the P1S, there really isn't much to mention. It's been good reviews almost the entire time, every review I see, that gives me a lot of confidence that this is something that's worth my investment. It also has a built-in camera system for time lapses. Awesome. Is it the best camera quality ever? No, but I don't really care about that. It's fine. A filtration system built in. Like I said, one of the things I wanted, not that I had to have it, but I'm really thrilled that it's there. Also with the AMS, if I ever want to print in something other than PLA, I can do that. The chamber is heated. So things that I don't think I'm going to use that often, I mainly print in PLA, but it's nice to have the option rather than not, right? Then, as I mentioned, the print quality in general is better. Even the first print right out of the box was better than what my Soval has been able to give me in the past like year, year and a half or so. It's not all rosy. Now look, the price, $850. Now this isn't obscene, but it's, it's still, that's a decent investment, $850. Now, if you don't want the AMS, you can get $200 off of that. But like I said, I really need that multicolor prints. And then the other is just the learning curve. I've used Cura as my slicer my entire life. So I'm very familiar with how it works, what its nuances are, and especially as I do my own 3D modeling, how Cura will react to when I import my own STL files. Bamboo is different, and I I've, I've still have a lot to learn, but it's not intuitive, and it's a steep learning curve. From what I can tell, I can't find a way to get a bamboo printer into Cura, so I'm using that slicer now, but that learning curve is something certainly to consider as well. But ultimately, the P1S, really on paper, covers everything I want, is for a decent price, so right off the bat was a very competitive machine and a com just, hey, 
Uh, maybe this is a top tier option for me and ultimately I did end up purchasing this one but let's talk about the other competitors and the other options I had before making my final decision. Now sticking with the bamboo family we have the X1C the carbon series. So the X1C is essentially a beefed up version of the P1S. So it's faster. You can actually print in 16 different colors, not just four. It has AI trained cameras so it can detect errors and issues that you might have with your prints. It ultimately, I totally believe it is a better printer overall. However, this also seems like a machine that is built for those who want incredibly high print quality, probably something like you have an actual business that you're selling products, or they really focus on the ability to print different materials. Now, as a hobbyist, those things don't mean a lot to me. I want good print quality, but I'm not selling people things. I'm not trying to make beautiful works of art here. I'm just a hobbyist. I want to make some cool stuff, maybe give it as gifts and things. And then, the, as I suggested, I, I, don't, I only use PLA. I don't really don't care if I can use metal filament or any of the fancy stuff. Just give me PLA. Now, the X1C, because obviously it's a better printer, it's faster, more tech, it is more expensive at $1,500. So when I sat down and I looked, the P1S does what I want. It's, uh, you know, half the price-ish. And so for me as a hobbyist, I think that really is what made me decide, let's go with the P1S over the X1C. The other thing, the X1C is newer, and that's a double-edged sword, right? On one hand, it's it's newer, so that's awesome. You have what's best available, and you know it's gonna be supported. It's gonna be the best you can get for a while. Whereas, it's also newer, so you, you don't have as many reviews. You don't have the long history of, will it hold up? Will it be stable over the year's time? So it's a little bit of a trade-off there, and I prefer, especially if I'm spending about a thousand bucks or more, I would rather know that the reviews and the consistency and the stable, uh, stability there is documented and seen. So let's hop to the next machine that I considered. Okay, next we have the original Prusa XL. Now this was one immediately that caught my eye. It is a ginormous build plate. You can have one, two, or five printer heads. Now this is huge because like my Soval, you have two different printer heads so you don't have the waste. You don't need a prime tower. You don't need all the filament poop. However, with that new tech and that awesome build volume and those awesome you know, printer heads, you also have added costs. So a two-headed Prusa XL is $2,500. A, a five-head, $3,500. So significantly more expensive. Now granted, that's pretty cool to print in five different colors. You have individual heads for each one. There's a lot to like about that. And I seriously considered this because of that. It's so neat. It's really tough to go from a multi-headed machine back to a single-headed one. But the price hurts, right? I'm a, As I suggested, I'm a hobbyist. I'm not selling things. I'm never going to make the money back off this. I'm just using it for fun. So four or five grand for a printer is just, it's hard to swallow. Then not only that price, but consider it doesn't have a camera from what I could tell. It doesn't have a filtration system. It's not a embedded and enclosed system like the P1S or the K2 Plus. There's a lot of bells and whistles that this doesn't have that the cheaper options, sometimes three times as cheap, have. So that's a little hard to swallow too. And then the thing that, that killed it for me is when you read the reviews, none of them were, were bad per se, but there were bugs. There are a lot of bugs and people had to work on the printer. It just wasn't as get up and go. Like even initially people were saying you get it out of the box and you're working on it for hours. And then it, and once you get it up and going, it, it's great. But like, dude, for four grand, 
that thing better be hand delivered. It better work perfectly right off the bat and I better not need to touch it. And that wasn't the case from the reviews, whether it be YouTubers, whether it be comments, whether it be forums, whether it be online articles, they all said something similar. So that scared me off a little bit. Just the whole game is trade-offs, right? If I'm going to spend that much money, I have to feel like I'm getting that much value. And it didn't seem to be there for this machine compared to one of the bamboos. That's why ultimately I didn't go with the original XL. All right, next is the Creality K2 Plus Combo. And I must admit, when I first saw this machine and I first saw it work, I was like, this is it. The search is over. This machine is absolutely perfect, and it's so close. So right off the bat, we've got 16, a possibility of 16 different colors. You have to have the different CFS systems, but still, that's awesome to be able to print in so many colors if you want to. It has a big print volume, 350 millimeter cubed, same as my Soval SV04, perfect size. You can make really big prints, it's pretty much everything you need unless you're doing something very specific in terms of 3D printing. It has a chamber. It's heated. You have the camera. You have the filtration system. The quality is out of this world. It can print a Benchy in 10 minutes, which is nuts. That is so fast, especially for that good of print quality. It also has really cool tech that is built in and allows a lot of the features I just mentioned to actually operate. But do your own research on it too. It's so cool what they've been able to add into this 3D printer. Dead serious. It is a picture perfect 3D printer on paper. It's everything I've ever wanted. I was like, it's it. Done. Boom. Search is over. And then as bad, oh, I hated it. I read and I watched the YouTube. I read the online forums. I perused Reddit. I looked at online ads or reviews rather. And with each comment, my heart broke more and more. And this perfect printer that I so desperately wanted, I saw slipping through my hand like grains of sand at the beach. I... It, the issue here is that you read the comments and the reviews. I'm going to say about 30% of them, people say right out of the box, it's absolutely perfect. It's the best printer I've ever had in my entire life. And I could see why. I believe it. However, the other 70%, they're saying this has been a miserable experience. And when I say that, I mean they're getting errors. Their print quality is bad. The first layers are garbage. The auto bed leveling is poor. That the just the different CFS systems, the interface doesn't work appropriately. They're getting all these error messages. They can't figure out how to solve. Creality can only help so much, even though they are very responsive. They can only do so much. And then even these 3D or these you know 3D printing YouTubers. Now, I'm going to say this as a consumer. I'm not saying exactly it's true because I guess, honestly, I don't know. But as a consumer, a small guy, he's just doing this as a hobby. I see these big YouTubers that have tens of millions of subscribers. Creality is paying them to do a review, right? They're giving them a machine for free. These guys, I would say the vast majority of them are not spending their own money. They're not spending the $1,500, for the K2 Plus, they're giving it, and it's to help convince people like me to invest in that money. Totally fine, no problem. But when I go and I see these YouTubers saying, they're not saying don't buy it, they're very professional, of course, right? But they're talking about the issues that they're having, the times that they've had, the number of parts they've had to replace, and the hours of troubleshooting, and the work they've done with the Creality customer service team, and all the different things they've done to try to get this thing to work, that terrifies me. Think about it. And again, I'm not saying this is right, but Creality is incentivized to give these guys the best experience humanly possible, and to give them, above anyone else, a machine that works right off the box, and that is perfect. That way, their review is glowing, and then it'll convince other people to buy it, right? 
These guys do this as a job. They're a lot smarter than I am. They're a lot more capable than I am. If they are still taking four, five, seven months to get their K2 Plus up to the quality that it should be out of the box, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. So, and I know people are negative, right? I understand it. So I even took that into calculation. 30% of the reviews are bad, um, or, or sorry, 70% of the reviews are bad, but people, you know, they exaggerate and then you're more likely to get people to complain than actually praise something. So then I was like, okay, well, let's just say only half of them suck. It's not small issues. It's major issues. They're sucking a ton of time away from your personal life trying to fix the print. It's like the thing won't work. It's not that, oh, the print quality is not as good as I want. No, like it won't work. So that, as bad as it, it broke my heart, for $1,500 for the time investment, it wasn't worth the risk. When I had a P1S over here that admittedly is not quite as good when everything in the world is working properly, but it's more consistent, it's stable, it's almost hard to find a bad P1S review at all, and it's hard to find a good K2 Plus positive review. So the risk wasn't worth the reward, in my opinion. So I had to pass on the K2 Plus and it's a killer. It could have been the perfect machine. Then let's jump into some of the other competitors and wrap it up. Next, we have the Anycubic Cobra S1 Combo. Now, this prints in eight different colors. Satisfies what I'm looking for. Reviews were good. None of them were bad. I mean, the machine isn't spectacular. It doesn't have the bells and whistles of a P1S or a K2+. Plus. But it's solidly constructed, same build volume, multiple colors, works perfectly fine. It's $750 MSRP. You can get it on sale. Even right now, it's on sale for $600. So it is cheaper than the P1S. However, I struggled a bit. I've never used an Anycubic printer. I don't know anyone who has used one. So... It's a little bit of a risk. Now, granted, I didn't know anyone with a Soval either, and I still bought that one. But the price range is similar to the P1S. So if I'm going to spend $600, I mean, I spent $850. Okay, the extra $1, $250 I saved. Again, I know people with a bamboo. I know their reputation. The bamboo has those bells and whistles. And if I'm not really looking to penny pinch and save and spend as little as possible, then it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Just, you know, just go with the bamboo. That was my thinking. Now, if you are strapped a little for cash, I think this would be perfectly fine. But for me, I wanted to go with the for sure thing. That's why I went with the bamboo, not the any cubic. So I've just laid out the main players in the multi-filament, multi-color 3D printer space. Now note, in lieu of making this video 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I'm going to stop there. Note there's a lot of other printers. You start getting into companies that are a little less well known, that are a little smaller. They have limited products. At some point, you have to stop somewhere. And heck, I admit, maybe there's a printer out there that's better than all the ones that I just mentioned. And I didn't see them. I didn't research them. But these seem to be the main players, the best on the market. And so I feel like I did enough research to feel good about choosing the P1S. I feel like the combination of the stability and just the historical track record, the company's reputation, the features that were built in, what specifically I wanted in a 3D printer it had, and the price was actually cheaper than I thought I was going to end up spending in the first place. So I was really happy with my choice, and I don't have buyer's remorse. I feel like I made an educated guess and made the best decision. Now, what I'm looking for in a 3D printer might be different than yours. So if nothing else, hopefully this guide at least helps you understand, at least as of right now, who the main players in the space are and gives you a better guide of, oh, I need to investigate this specific 3D printer 
over some of the others to save you a little bit of time. Either way, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please comment below. Like I said, I spent hours reviewing and researching this stuff. Happy to help any way I can. But again, thanks for watching. Happy printing.